Well, I love that umbrella guy. <laughs> My wife and I love that umbrella guy. Oh, we love that umbrella guy. So if you love that umbrella guy too, make sure that you're subbed. Make sure that you hit that bell for daily notification, accepting these things as well while you do it. And if you want to go further, you love the channel but don't know how to help out a different way, links are in the description. You're under no obligation to do so, but check those out if you want to. One of those is the case of the Littlest Umbrella. All ages love crafty and tail, and also another comic book attached to it. I think that this actually is a good way to send messages to gatekeepers out there because they say that we cannot be involved in industry. Well, you know what? Yeah, we can. We can certainly be involved. We can certainly do what we want. And when they tell us we can't compete, we can indeed. So anyway, if you want to hear more about that, wait till the end of the video. I'll discuss it more then. So today we are returning to the big brains out there. That's right. We're turning to Mr. Ron Toy, the guy that apparently can't stop himself from talking. This has been a problem for the longest now. Ron deciding that he's going to sound off on things, that he's going to throw his opinion into the ring. And well, that's how he ended up in litigation. Not because his opinion wasn't something that should be out there, but rather because he utilized that opinion to burn someone's life and livelihood down. That's part of what is discussed here too. The messages out there that showcase exactly what level he went to and, well, how he can't avoid putting himself in the middle of this debate. You can see how this starts out. May the 15th is when the, uh, when the live stream is announced where they're going to be talking about this. And, well, May the 16th, you have Ron deciding to answer that. I don't mind that you have them. Not afraid of any of my texts, emails, messages, or anything else that will come out. We are not the ones asking to keep things hidden from the public. Ha ha. What are they so afraid of? Huh. So you went out, you decided to damage things and on, and other people out there, they're afraid of. What is it, you ask? Well, they're afraid of you. They're afraid of people like you because you have tried to set everything on fire. Have you not figured that out yet? The bad guy in this tale, it's not Vic Mignogna. It's not Kamea Khan. It's not the people standing with Vic. It's you. You're the bad guy. Now here's another example of how Ron inserts himself into things yet again. And remember, everything that Ron does is cyclical. He'll start out, he'll start liking posts, then he'll start inserting himself, and that's after he's supposedly taking a hiatus. He said he was going to do that in March. If you look back to the Kamehacon incident, he goes silent. Then he starts liking things that not only involve Vic, but point the finger at those pesky fandoms, you know, that support these people. Because that's what you should do. You really care about Monica, you should run fans away. That's the smart thing. That's the big-brained idea. Because those people that you bring toward her, they may stick for a little while, but overall, what you're going to do is you're going to diminish support. But anyway, looking at this conversation here. So you see Shane bringing up the uh, the Vic thing with the Kamea Khan, which is an interesting question in and of itself. Him influencing behind the scenes. Someone asked him, too, you know, just curious, how do you bring bring that stuff up. How exactly did it come up there? And he said, well, we talk about lots of things. And I found this to be an interesting thing in this conversation, too. He said that they brought up the swatting thing as well. That makes me wonder, considering the way that Shane has gone to bat again and again for what we know is a fake swatting, I wonder what kind of uh, pressure this guy tried to assert behind the scenes for himself. I mean, we've already seen what Ron did. What about Shane? I wonder what exactly Shane did in that. So they keep going, you know, okay, but I'm asking, uh, how did you bring up the legal investigation? How did you word the question? Or did you just make the statement? And uh, he was like, yeah, I already knew. I think the first time we ever discussed it, it was probably something, it went something like, the internet is going crazy. So the person asked again, like, how did you bring this stuff up? And of course, you know, he's like, ah, I don't remember. It could have been a phone call 
Bible or text. I talk to lots of con owners on a regular basis. I don't really keep up with that. So, you know, and this is how uh, you know the con owner knew about legal investigation before Ron told him. The issue is, you may think the only person that Casey talked to was Ron. He talks to a lot of guests or potential guests all the time. Con runner talks to con runners too. So he's telling you, hey, this is how that stuff came up. And then you have all of this discussion about messages coming in, which is kind of interesting there. Except Ron told Kamea Con about it pretty much the day the investigation started. Unless you're suggesting the word of confidential information got out the day it started, there's no way anyone outside Funny heard about it, and it was why Kamea Con decided to drop Vic. You can see here, you know, the uh, 15 on January 16, 2019. This is from the lawsuit as well, if you don't recognize that. And you can see, you know, the narrative that's telling you, yeah, this is how that started. This is how that guy dropped. Especially since Ron suggested there was uh, about to be legal investigation and that Vic was a predator. Still no type of legal investigation whatsoever, by the way. So you see this information too, cut off a little bit at the top. It's not just the internet. He assaulted three close friends of mine and one additional person that's even closer. But I can't say how much because here is an investigation going on. This will get ugly, so we are talking with our legal team to see if there uh, could be any fallout if we are sponsoring an event with him in attendance. So you see all of this talking about that, you know, and by it all goes down. Is there something I should know about? They came forward. I can tell you now, based on our contracts, if he has people step forward and or charges, he will be dropped. So, you know, they go in talking about, well, when you look at it, how it's set up. So he doesn't know who is coming to the front with these issues, but that's why I need you not to say anything because it can hurt Sony's investigation and the legal investigation. So you do indeed see the idea brought up of legal investigation, telling these folks that, hey, that stuff's going to come to the front and you better watch out. You better not pout. You better not cry. I'm telling you why. Because Ronnie Claus is coming to ruin your convention. Yeah, I'll get a list for you. Please do. From a legal standpoint, I can get sued without uh, probable conduct or legal issues. Uh, makes sense. I will. We have time before your con. It's coming quick. But this stuff will probably pop before. So, I mean, you can see that. You know, all of that stuff coming up. I promise it's true. VAs and staff. I mean, you see. You're welcome. I know it's tough, but he's a predator. This guy went out of his way to do damage. You saw that. That is, I mean, it's in black and white there. His words. So when he's saying, number one, that he doesn't care that people actually have this information, well, maybe he should. Maybe him going behind the scenes and saying something that, well, isn't something there? Yeah, maybe that's a screw-up. Maybe that's a huge screw-up. So Shane fires back, no type of legal investigation that you know of. Dun-dun-dun. You know, because totally, that's what's going on. These folks, of course, like Jamie Marshy and on, have been calling for minors to step forward. Hey, if you come out, basically, we can charge this guy with something because the statute of limitations, it won't wear off. Big-brained ideas, like I say. So this goes forward again. And how does this prove he knew about the legal investigation before Ron told him? He states, if there are people coming forward and or charges, he will be dropped. If he knew beforehand, Vic would have been dropped before February 1st, hell, before January 22nd. Look at the screenshot. The owner clearly says if people come forward, Vic will be dropped. Holy hell, look at all the people who came forward. So again, this is dodging the idea that's being presented, number one. This is going to bat for somebody again and again because as we know, Shane, yeah, Shane the big brain, he is out there doing damage control, and bam, we see Ron get in there with the brain explosion, because yeah, your brain, you know what it explodes over? It explodes over seeing a guy insert himself into this again and again. Right there, this finishes, the owner gives reason why he 
would drop Vic. Not Ron's sponsorship or Monica, but people coming forward. Dozens did. Hmm. But you know what they promised was some type of legal ramification, some type of investigation out there that says that the guy actually was immersed in wrongdoing. Not he said, she said. Not the internet brigading. Not burning down someone's life and livelihood because, hey, I'm joining in an internet lynch mob. No, none of that stuff. It was something different, something altogether different. And yeah, it says quite a bit there. But anyhow, I thought that this was interesting because it's going in the circle like I was talking about before. You're going to see Ron complete this circle. He completes all of that this way. He goes from uh, silence because someone, possibly a lawyer, tells him to be quiet. That's good information there. To liking posts. He was doing that before. Liking Shane's posts. To getting involved because there's some type of catalyst where he can't keep his mouth shut. This it was embarrassment and beyond, showcasing exactly what he did behind the scenes with Kamehakan. And once that floodgate opens, yeah, Ron will be all over the place. Ron will be liking that stuff. He'll probably retweet sooner or later. Yeah, you never know exactly what kind of stupid he gets into. And remember, if you're wondering why likes and retweets matter, we'll go back and look at the litigation. Because that that's brought up clearly within it. These people are immersed in wrongdoing because they got involved in that. But anyhow, you tell me what you think about all of this stuff here. If you like this kind of content too, make sure that you're subscribed and make sure you hit that bell for daily notifications. And if you want to go further, there are links in the description that help out the channel. Again, under no obligation. One of those, as I said at the beginning, was the case of the Littlest Umbrella. This is an all-ages Lovecraftian tale plus another comic book attached. We have added in multiple stretch goals, and right now this is in demand. How long will it be there? Well, while we're working on it, that basically allows people to jump in. And if this number actually goes up to 100, then we'll add 10 more pages to the book with a whole complete story. So what you get is more stuff just because, you know, just because, because that's the way it works. So you can see that this tier here, you get that book, plus you get another book, this one here. Uh, it is basically a satirical approach to what happened with Comicsgate. It makes, uh, it makes fun of the entire situation in a few ways, showcasing a a point of absurdity, but also it showcases this, um, this homage to exactly who's been involved. I think that's important too. But anyhow, you give me your uh, comments on this mess because, hey, this is definitely a trash fire because this guy, he can't keep himself out of it. That's the beauty of it too. He can't keep himself out of situations. I love that about old Ronnie boy because, yeah, he doesn't ever learn. Ever. He never, ever learns. To close this, I want to thank you for showing up, too. You make these endeavors possible. People like Ron, people like Monica, they forgot that lesson. They forgot who exactly makes everything possible. And, well, they'll learn. They'll learn over time. So I want to thank you. I want to thank you for showing up. I want to thank you for your support in many ways. You know, liking, subscribing, listening, clicking, doing more. Whatever you do, you make all of this possible. So thank you. I appreciate you, and we'll do this again soon. Thanks.